Lord God, call us to your higher vision of love, that we may be bound together in love as you are bound together in love, and so reveal your love in the world for Jesus' sake. Amen. Good to be sharing with you again this Trinity Sunday. I used to love climbing hills. I say used to because I'm feeling the age now and um, I think probably the last big hill climb I did was in the Lake District when we uh, walked up Red Pike uh, from Buttermere and I remember the day because it was just so lovely walking beside the lake to find the path and then we started going up and up and up and it was just so hard uh, but it was worth it when we got to the top the, the views are amazing over the lakes over the other mountains all around uh, just incredible uh, vista of views and hugely different perspective from where we started by the lake beautiful as that was there was just something awesome about the view from the top. In our reading, we heard about Nicodemus, who rather reluctantly comes to Jesus. He comes by night so that maybe people won't notice that he's come uh, to see this uh, new preacher. And uh, Jesus, I think quite deliberately, challenges him with some quite difficult things. I mean, there's so much in the passage, but the things that stand out to me are uh, about new birth, a new beginning with God, and, and the, the work of God's Spirit, the wind of God's Spirit. Um, and uh, you could almost see the cogs turning. Oh, gosh, oh, dear. I can't cope with this. Oh dear. Um, Nicodemus says, how can this be? How can this be? But I think Jesus is inviting him up to see a wider perspective. Yeah, you've understood things well so far, but there's more to see, more to understand, more to grasp of God. And yeah. Nicodemus, we, we understand from hints in the gospel, um, stuck with it and, uh, and grew in faith. And, well, we don't really know what, what happens, but God was at work in his life. But on this Trinity Sunday, how do we sort of conceive of God? Hopefully over my uh, shoulder is uh, Rublev's lovely um, icon or a card of Rublev's icon of the Trinity. I just love the rich colours of this. And th there's a sort of um, amazing poise, vulnerability about the figures representing the Trinity. But they're very static. I mean, icons are static. Uh, so beautiful as it is, I'm, I'm finding myself wanting to imagine God in a more dynamic way. And the thing that's come into my mind is a group of three people holding hands, hand in hand, dancing a sort of wild jig, uh, delightedly dancing around and uh, such joy. Um, and I don't know, that just seems to convey to me something about God, the greatness of God, the joy of God. Um, and that gives us a vision of God held together in love, because God doesn't hold hands. Well, I don't presume he does, but God is held together with love. So that love is at the heart of all things. So love is at the heart of creation, the heart of the universe. Which is, I think, something powerful about this being a, a benevolent universe. 
not not a, a, a frightening place. I mean, it is frightening for us at the moment with with COVID and the new variants and talking to someone uh, this week uh, whose um, uh, son is in a school where there is the, the new so-called Indian variant, confirmed cases, <gasps> doing tests uh, every week. And oh, yeah, it, it, it's frightening. But we can trust that below all of the, the tumult and, and turmoil, there is love holding all things together, working out God's purpose in ways we don't understand. If God is held together by love, then we should reflect his love in our relationships and that is a, a real challenge it's very much flowing on from uh, what uh, Toby was saying uh, last week um, he said so much uh, 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 it's worth looking at it again but uh, divisions are man-made and God can sweep them away and that's been my experience too of uh, the power of God at work, and I'll share some experiences uh, later on. But first of all, I want to sort of reflect on, you know, what? why is it so hard to love others? And I think it's perhaps um, helpful to realise that we as human beings are tribal. We are tribal creatures. We, we tend to revert to tribalism. Uh, unless we are called to a higher vision. Um, so often in, in difficult circumstances, um, we trust those we know, we don't trust we don't, those we don't know. And, and that serves us well in emergency, but it's not really a, um, a vision for life. It's certainly not the calling we have as Christians. And down the centuries, leaders have played on our tribalism. They have said, we're the good guys and they over there, whoever they are, are the bad guys. So we need to pull together to keep the bad guys out or to fight the bad guys. We need to raise an army to fight the bad guys. And, oh dear. Yeah, you can see that it's, it's, it's worked. It has, and it's working in our world today in some ways. But, oh, what a limited vision. It may win elections, but... Is this really what God is calling us to? Uh, oh dear, the bombs are going. I didn't think about when, when I was recording it. A few weeks ago, uh, we were reminded of Jesus' words, love one another, a new commandment I give to you. Love one another as I have loved you. And it's been striking me that uh, Jesus is all about love and revealing God's love in, in the world. Jesus was, was born into our world to reveal love. Jesus lived out his, his, his ministry to reveal God's love. Jesus died on the cross to reveal God's love. He was raised from the dead to reveal God's love. It's all about, it's all about other things as well, but uh, I think primarily, and Theologians agree that it's primarily about love. I'm reading one of Rowan Williams' wonderful books at the moment. But that's hard because we are all damaged people. Life is brutal and most people I know, everyone I know, has been hurt by life, some more than others. And when we come to know God and recognise that God is at work in us. God leads us on a journey of recognising more of his love 
and then God takes us down and we realise how much there is to heal and to be transformed. And God is at work doing that. And, and, and then we recognise more of his love and then, and then we recognise more that needs to be healed and so on to the end of our lives. But it's, it's progress and, and we're learning and God is at work. And like Toby, I've had some very profound experiences of God bringing people together who are divided, overcoming prejudices in me. Um, I remember when I went to Poland um, meeting a, a Roman Catholic man who wanted to tell me through translation about how the Holy Spirit had enabled him to come off his addiction to heroin. And you could see his, his face was, was still scarred by the pain of that addiction and the hopelessness in his country at the time. Um, but he wanted me to know what the Holy Spirit had been doing in his life. And it was just amazing to see and, and, and a delight and open my eyes to see that God was so much more... Um, at work than, than I'd, you know, given him credit for. And, oh, so many experiences. Uh, I think of the, the uh, in Egypt, the Coptic Orthodox service that I attended part of, where it was all in Coptic, which is, you know, an ancient language. Apart from, they sang Kyrie eleison and Christe eleison in Greek. And, oh yeah, I, I, I understand that. I, I know what that's about. But God was there. And it was wonderful, awesome. I, I, I think to my shame of those people I've struggled to love and, and, and see God at work in. But when we've prayed together, God has done that work inside me and gosh, I feel different because we've been praying together, because we've let God in to reveal something more of his love. And I would say people who don't seem to have a faith or don't have a faith that I can recognise and I've sensed the Spirit of God in their compassion people I'm thinking of, their compassion for others and their, 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 their passion to make the world a better place. God is at work. God's spirit is at work. Calling us to a higher vision, a vision of love. That maybe you can call to mind that, that uh, the image I have, I don't know what sort of image you, you have of of, of the Trinity whirling in delight, in, in love, held together in love, whirling and dancing. And that inspiring us to love others, to catch that vision of love. Yes, to love others within our group, our little tribe or our big tribe, our church perhaps. Churches can be terribly tribal. As as, and, and, and divided as Toby was sharing the pain of division in the church that is revealed through abuse and, 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 and prejudice and ah, this is what God is wanting to, to be at work in to change, to transform so yes, learning to love those who are around us but catching the vision of, of, uh, of, of loving God's Church all around the world in all its difference and diversity. And I don't think it stops there. I think loving one another means loving each other as the human family. That we're not tribes. We are one family. That is the higher vision of love. That we are one family. Who can be reunited in love, by love by God's love at work in us, overcoming our pain and hurt, which is, is so real and it's so hard to open up to let God come and bring that healing and that 
transformation and that new vision when, when we have been so hurt. But I hope I, I've shared something that might inspire you to let God uh, be so at work in you that you love others as you have been loved by God. And, and that image of who those others is, that vision of who those others is, is, is enlarged, enlarged and gets bigger and bigger. So that our love for others may reveal God at work in our lives for his praise and glory.